We'll call to order the Planning Commission meeting for Thursday, February 18th, 2021. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Harlicker, will you please call the roll? Yes. Um, Commissioner uh, Casey? Here. Uh, Commissioner Knobloch? Here. Uh, Commissioner Heikola? Here. Uh, Commissioner Bradley? Here. Uh, Commissioner Schmolke? Here. Uh, Commissioner Geisler? Here. And Chair Schwartz? Here. Uh, next order of business is to uh, oath of office for our two renewing members, Mr. Harlicker. Yes, we have uh, two commissioners who were reappointed um, this year for another term, uh, Commissioner Schmolke and Casey. Um, if you please stand, and uh, I'll read you the uh, oath of office, and we'll just do it in place here. I, I always wanted to say this, state your name. <laughs> I, Kathy Casey. This is for both of you, you can oh. do it at the same time. Okay, I, Mary Schmolke. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And discharge faithfully the duties of the Office of the Planning Commissioner for the City of Coon Rapids. And discharge faithfully the duties of the Office of the Planning Commission of the City of the Coon Rapids. In the County of Anoka. In the County of Anoka. And the State of Minnesota. And the State of Minnesota. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. Congratulations on your reappointment. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, our next order of business would be to adopt our agenda. Chair Schwartz. Commissioner Schmolke. We'd like to add two items to the agenda. Uh, the first being approval of the rules, policies, and ethics, and the second, approve a vice chair. And that would be under a the bit, other, other business. business. Correct. All right. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Schmoke with the additions, second by Heiko. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? And the uh, agenda is adopted. Next, we have approval of the minutes of our January 21st meeting. Mr. Chair? Commissioner Heiko. I move approval of the minutes of the January 21st, 2021 meeting. I'll second that. Motion by Heiko, a second by Knobloch. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the minutes are approved. Under new business, our first case of the evening is planning case 21-3, a preliminary plat for two commercial lots at 1829 Northdale Boulevard. MK Enterprises, Mr. Harleyker. Yes, good evening, uh, commissioners and chair. Um, this, uh, the first item and the second one are uh, concerning the same piece of property. Uh, the preliminary plat is being uh, considered in conjunction with a site plan for a car wash and a retail building. Um, this is the uh, location map here. Uh, the property is this triangular piece located at the corner of Northdale Boulevard and Hanson with Lyons Park over this way, Gateway Commercial Center here, and some general commercial on the other side of Northdale. Uh, the preliminary plat is to plat a 1.97 acre parcel into two lots. Uh, one for the car wash and one for the uh, commercial building. The lot for the car wash, lot one, is 0.96 acres. 
and lot two, which is the commercial building, is 0.88 acres. Um, the lots comply with the dimensional requirements of the uh, general commercial district, and park dedication was collected at the time that the convenience store uh, was developed. Um, staff recommends that the planning commission recommend approval of the uh, preliminary plat with the conditions that engineering comments be addressed and the comments from Anoka County Highway Department be addressed. With that, I'll answer any questions. Mr. Harlicker, as far as addresses for the buildings, will they both use the same address or what, one get a new address? They'll have two different addresses. <coughs> and Commission, any other questions for Mr. Harlicker? Mr. Chair? Commissioner Heikel. I'm just kind of wondering, is there any thing going to, can you foresee any problems with the Noka County Highway Department and the design of the right-of-way? Um, uh, Commissioner Heikel, at this point, no. Uh, the applicant has been working with the Anoka County Highway Department on access into the site. Um, in their letter that uh, I received a draft earlier this week, um, they don't need any additional right-of-way, and they'll be working with the applicant on uh, right turn lane going into the property off of Hanson Boulevard. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Harlicker? Chair Schwartz. Commissioner Naubach. I have a question, and it first goes to you before it goes to Mr. Harlicker, but I have a question on the design of the, but uh, shall we leave that for 21-4 uh, for the site plan, or is that suitable for the preliminary plat, or are we gonna combine them in this discussion? Uh, if it's anything to do with the design, it would probably be for the second case. All right. Uh, then I'll, d I'll defer my questions till the site plan. Any other questions? Uh, petitioner, have anything they'd like to say at this time for the preliminary plat? Just, uh, just one item. Go up to the microphone, please. Oh, Give your name and address, please, for the record. So my name is Mick Ward, and I just wanted to kind of clarify the access. So there will be um, a right turn lane off of Hanson, and we were just informed three days ago by the county that they more than likely will also require a right turn lane into the property off of Northdale. So we're just in the process of kind of working through that now with the county. But of course, we'll comply with whatever needs to be uh, addressed there. All right, thank you. All right, at this time, uh, we do need to have a public hearing, so I will open a public hearing in planning case 21-3, the preliminary plat for two commercial lots at 1829 Northdale Boulevard. Anyone wish to speak at the public hearing? Chair Schwartz. Yes, sir. Blair Butchaconi with the city attorney's office. I'm monitoring the Zoom for today. Uh, there are no attendees that wish to speak. Thank you very much. And there's n no one present wishing to speak, so at this time I will close the public hearing and we'll leave discussion for this case to the commission. Chair Schwartz. Commissioner Nabla. Um In the preliminary plat for this, uh, location. I'm glad to see that there's some development going on in it. So I'm, all I want to say and keep it short is it's nice to, it's good to see development on this critical corner on Hanson and Northdale, right by, beside Kings, Kings Park. Kings Park, is it? Yeah. Lions. Lions. Lions Park, sorry. Close. That's all. Thank you. I'm not trying else? to rename it. That's Anoka. Oh, yeah, Kings Park in Anoka, yeah. Commissioner Schmoke. Can I make a motion? Sure. Uh, in planning case 21 3, uh, recommend approval of the preliminary plat with the following conditions. Uh, first, that all engineering comments are addressed. And second, that all comments um, from the Anoka County Highway Department are also addressed. Second. Mm -hmm. 
Motion by Smokey, second by Geisler. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This is a recommendation by the Planning Commission and decision will be made by the City Council at their March 2nd meeting. Uh, our second case this evening under new business, planning case 21-4, the site plan for a car wash and retail building at 1829 1 Northdale Boulevard, MK Enterprises. Mr. Harlicker. Yes, uh, Chair and Commissioners. Uh, the applicant's requesting site plan approval for the car wash and a 3,900 square foot multi-tenant commercial building. Uh, the car wash is located here. Uh, the commercial building is back over on this side. Um, access into the site, there's a right in, right out onto Northdale and a right in, right out, out onto Hanson. Uh, traffic to the uh, uh, car wash will generally come, if they come in off of Northdale, loop through the site, come in here, and then out here. Um, these stalls here will have uh, vacuums on them for vacuuming. Um, and then uh, this parking here is, uh, will be used primarily by the retail building. And uh, this parking over here, uh, primarily for the uh, car wash. Uh, the site plan includes uh, 36 parking spaces um, 20 for the commercial building and 16 for the car wash. Uh, code requires 16 for the commercial building that there isn't a requirement for the car wash. Um, traffic, um, the applicant did do a traffic study. Um, the analysis was that the uh, uh, traffic on Northdale and Hanson uh, can be accommodated under uh, existing conditions. Uh, the way the site's laid out, the dumpster enclosure is located internal to the site here, and then the one for the uh, retail building is at uh, this location here. Uh, grading drainage and utilities um, are being reviewed by the applicant or by the applicant by the uh, city engineering department um, this is the uh, grading plan the most recent grading plan um, they do have an underground system here and a pond over in this area here uh, the site is relatively flat um, if you notice the grading kind of stops here so this corner triangular piece up along Hanson will remain uh, undisturbed, all the vegetation and trees uh, will stay in place. Um, here's the landscaping plan. Um, the landscaping plan does comply with city code requirements. With the street trees, overstory trees along Hanson, Northdale, um, internal to the site on the landscaped islands and uh, peninsulas here. Um, they do have some on the back side of this building here, um, evergreens and ornamentals that help screen the buildings. Um, here's more of a close-up of what's going on around the buildings. You can see this is along Northdale. So the sides of the buildings uh, visible from the streets uh, will all be landscaped as will this uh, uh, landscape peninsula out here. The areas around the proposed signs, um, they'll be proposing two of them, one at this location here and one here. Those um, will be subject to uh, separate sign permits as well any uh, building signage. Um, one of staff's recommendation is that some additional screening be proposed along or around the uh, dumpster enclosures. They do have some trees, uh, but something a little bit lower than that to help screen it some, uh, some sort of uh, some shrubs or uh, ornamental grasses, tall ornamental grasses to break up the lower part 
uh, of the dumpster enclosures. Um, these are the building elevations. The applicant does have uh, material samples um, with the brick along the base and EFIS, multicolored EFIS panels uh, up above. Uh, but they do do a good job of breaking up the facade with windows along uh, Northdale. And this is the entrance to the car wash uh, facing Hanson. And they've got the uh, uh, awnings and uh, ornamental metal at the high points here. And here, this is the inside. This faces the interior of the site. And this is the um, exit uh, for the car wash. Uh, the buildings, as proposed, uh, do comply with the mix of materials. Um, we've allowed uh, EFIS as, uh, as a material, and when they mix up the colors, it's considered um, changing up the materials. Uh, this here is the uh, proposed uh, commercial building. This is the front of the building faces Northdale or the interior of the site. Um, this is the end of the building face in Hanson. Southeast corner, and then this is the back side of the building. And again, they do meet the uh, requirements for mixing up the materials with brick, ephus, and stone. Um, they've got awnings over the entrances and windows here. And they've got these uh, raised little uh, pillars here, pilasters, to help break up the building and uh, give the building some interest. Um, the plans that uh, we're looking at tonight um, have been revised. Uh, the civil plans have been revised since the uh, commissions uh, received their packet, excuse me. And uh, so I was recommending that the recommendation and conditions uh, be revised. Um, staff is still recommending approval of the site plan um, with the uh, following conditions. That all engineering comments be addressed, all comments from Anoka County Highway Department be addressed, and the applicant enter into a site security agreement. Um, conditions four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine um, should be uh, uh, eliminated. Um, on the site plan, one of the conditions was that they provide crosswalks where the driveways cross uh, the access points into the site. Uh, they have done that. Um, the revised landscape plan uh, complies with the uh, landscape requirements. Um, the dumpster enclosure was moved to the interior of the site. Uh, condition number 10 should remain. Uh, with additional landscaping required around the dumpster enclosures. Uh, condition 11 remains, uh, both ground signs and all wall signage require separate permits. And the final condition, um, the fiber cement panels on the car wash be more muted tones so that they are compatible with consistent and consistent with the commercial building. Um, staff's concerns with the uh, uh, materials um, the vibrant uh, EFIS panels here, is that because they are so vibrant that uh, over time, as, as they fade, it will be more noticeable. And that if you mute the tones down a little bit, um, they would be more compatible with the uh, uh, design of the commercial building. Uh, with that, I'll answer any questions. And uh, the applicant is here to add to the presentation and they do have uh, material samples for the exterior of the buildings. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Harlicker. Commission, any questions for Mr. Harlicker? Chair Schmitz. Commissioner Schmolke. Uh, Mr. Harlicker, I'm just curious, when you say muted tones or to mute the tones, can you explain what that means a little bit? Are you asking them to change the color up completely or just do um, a lighter tone of the colors that are on there? What do you mean exactly by mute the tones? It, it could be either. Either? Yeah. Um, 
still do the, the, the shades of greens and gray, but um, make them less vibrant um, or do uh, or colors that Or change it are, up so that it's, again, um, not so bold. More earth tones altogether. Earth tones. Um, okay, thank you. Chair Schwartz. Commissioner Nablot. I have a, a, so three questions for Mr. Harlicker and uh, maybe the applicant can uh, chime in on some of these, but um, all three are relevant questions that are, I think the proposal is, is wonderful for the location. So the issue is the community around this area and I'm s talking specifically about Lions Park. Now as the spring, summer and fall come upon us, uh, it's a very well trafficked, a lot of families, a lot of children, a lot of families um, have being active in the area. Uh, the first question I have um, is in regards to the garbage enclosure. So will there be a cover on top of it? And the reason I'm linking it to Lions Park is because of the water and there is you may not see them as often, but I live in kind of in the area, and there is animal exposure there. So that's why I'm asking about, my first question is about, is there a top exposure or, or is there just doors on the outside? Um, Commissioner Knobloch, at this point, um, it's just the, the typical enclosure with the three walls and the uh, enclosure on the front. Mm -hmm. uh, when you start to put we, we don't require roofs on the enclosures. Um, it has to do a lot with access to the, uh, to the dumpsters inside there. And uh, trucks generally pull in, they lift them up. And with a roof on, it doesn't, uh, it impedes that, that, that flow. So no, there are no roofs proposed at this time. All right. My second question is with the commercial proposed, the retail building kind of in line with my earlier comment with the activity that's going to be um, visiting this area, especially spring through fall. Um, hours of operation for the intended retail building, because uh, the operations are like dawn to dusk at Lions Park. So um, hours of operation, is that inferred or mentioned in the application? Uh, no, it was not. Typically, um, we don't regulate when businesses can be open and, or not. All right. And this is my last question. The third one, also because of the location of it, um, and I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but bike racks, is there any proposed interest in adding one or two bike racks to the side of the retail building? Um, because I don't see anything. There's there. not. I, I think that'd be a, a, a worthwhile condition to add. Um, there is a connection out to the, the sidewalk on Hanson. Mm -hmm. So maybe on that north end, um, in, in this area here, they could add a, add a bike rack to that. I think that's a worthy, a low cost worthy uh, uh, addition to the plan. And that's it. And Commissioner, any other questions from Mr. Harlicker at this time? Let's go ahead, Don. Mr. Chair, I'm wondering, is this facility, the car wash, staffed? How is it going to be staffed? Is it 24 hours, 24 seven, or what are the hours that it's going to be open then? Um, I'll let the applicant speak to staffing for the, for the car wash. Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Casey. So Mr. Harlicker, where exactly did that dumpster get moved into the interior does uh, it uh, it what? was right out here at this corner uh they moved it to this location right here i can you describe it because i i'm having trouble seeing your arrow or your um it's right in the center of the site okay on the other side of the car wash kind of yep internal here's the car wash stop <laughs> Well, I saw it. Oh, well. Uh, this is the car washes here. And can you see the arrows in the gray area here? Okay. And if you follow it across, the dumpster's right here. Okay. 
and uh, the dumpster will be consistent, both dumpsters will be consistent with the materials of the commercial building. Okay, and typically the, the container that is in that dumpster is, they have lids on them usually, those commercial ones. So that could um, be, you know, as far as any animals getting in or whatever. And I so. then I think I'm clear on this, but confirm it for me. This piece of property is not part of the PUD that exists on the other side of Hanson, right? Yeah, Commissioner Casey, that's correct. Okay. So the BP station that was there was never subject to any kind of materials. Um, that's right. Yep. You know, uh, conditions. Uh, this property uh, is zoned general commercial, just straight general yeah. commercial zone. Okay, and then, because that BP station had some pretty bright green adornments. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. And probably faded through the years, too. All right, thank you. Any other questions from the Mr. Chair? Sure. Oh, go ahead. Commissioner Geisler. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Harlecker, so you mentioned that you had saw a draft letter from Anoka County Highway. Um, have they finalized their comments yet to the applicant and to the city? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Thank you. And Commissioner Schmolke. Thank you. Mr. Harlecker, one other final question. So, and it goes back to the dumpsters, sorry, but just looking at the placement of those um, and the parking spaces around it, have we, are we sure that the, um, that the uh, Garbage trucks can, you know, can maneuver through there to uh, to reach the dumpsters and be able to empty um, them. Looking at the site plan, I believe they can. Um, are they going to be able to do it during lunchtime? No. Um, the owners would have to coordinate with the uh, the trash haulers to get their pickups during off peak hours. Okay. And is, is there any concern? Like, is there any recommendation where they could move them? if they needed to or is this it like is this their only option what they've got here well this is where they're proposing them okay um as you can see there is quite a bit of space these are this is all open here okay so they could come in and access this one and this one here too there's 24 there's 44 feet mm -hmm. between the dumpster and this curb line so there's there's room to get in and then uh, maneuver and, and, and pull okay. out Okay, thank you. Any other questions at this time? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Geisler. Thank you. Mr. Harlecker, does this site need a shared access agreement since uh, both driveways are conceived to be um, used? Yes, it will. Okay. Do we need to add that as a condition? We could add that as a condition. Thank you. All right, any other questions at this time? Uh, petitioners, would like to uh, go ahead and make your presentation then, please. Yeah, absolutely. So I'd like to do the best just to uh, pass out some samples for you. How's that? Give you kind of a good idea of what we're looking at here. So the first thing I did for you, we're working with a company out of Chicago called WashU. Please do all your speaking at the yeah, microphone yeah. for the record, please. Yeah. yeah, so we're working with a, a company out of Chicago that um, has been in the wash business for, for many years. Uh, the name of the, the brand is WashU. So we, our goal is to copy the look. Uh, so I'll kind of pass this along for you to take a, take a glance at. Um, one of the ideas that we have to maybe mute the colors a little bit is instead of using the Nichiha panels on the sides of the building, we're proposing switching that to a white ACM steel material. Uh, so there's not as much of the colors, you know, you'll have it at the entrance and the exit, but the sides then would be stone and white ACM above. So I'll pass this along for you to take a look at. Um, commissioners and chair, I think that would be similar to what they used on the Honda building. Mm -hmm. All right. And then there's just some other examples here of kind of what's going on in the market. Uh, this is a washout in Stillwater that's very similar. 
uh, Tommy's uh, is um, a national chain that's uh, building multiple locations in the Twin Cities. This happens to be in Fridley uh, off of Mounds View Boulevard that's opening later this month. And then they have another one in New Hope. So we can pass those along. Here. This is a sample of the white ACM that we would propose in place of the panels on the sides of the building. Uh, here are samples of the stone that we're proposing, and we could certainly incorporate the same stone onto the retail building. And shifting over to the retail building, these are the two different brick selections that are uh, on the design that you have in front of you now. Okay. And then the the EFIS material that is on the top of the building. Pretty standard, standard EFIS. Uh, so we have options with, you know, the Nichiha now uh, can come in many different forms. So this is actually a Nichiha wood look uh, paneling that uh, we certainly could use. And that would be on which building? Uh, this is all, I'm sorry, this is all in the retail building. Okay. And that would be the darker? That's correct. Yep. Areas. Yep. And there's two different ways to achieve the look, either with the Nichiha or this is a steel material. So either or would kind of achieve that, that, that look there. Um, this is a little accent that we have at the bottoms of the pillars. Here. Yep, so a stone stone accent oh. there. And this is all the aluminum on the windows. On the windows and the yep and the, the surround there. Uh, what sort of materials are they going to be using for the awnings? Is this uh, like a canvas type? That's of kind material? of what we're yes. Yep. Exactly. Um, so now back over to the wash. We wanted to give you kind of a better idea of the color palette that we're looking at. So these are the, the green colors that we're proposing. So in, in working with, again, Wash U out of Chicago, they're, um, the first location they built is now five years old. They use a satin finish on the Nichiha. Uh, that is held up, you know, so far, uh, you know, five years out. They haven't had to repaint uh, any of their buildings. So, you know, we would like to kind of reassure you that there, there shouldn't be a lot of fading. Um, we're committed to building multiple units here in the Twin Cities, so we would certainly um, uh, repaint if necessary over the years. But that's kind of the, the look that we're going for. Um, so at this point, what you're, you're looking at doing is on the long sides, you do the, the white and then do the accent colors on the entrance and exit areas? Yeah, we would still propose wrapping the accents here, but just uh, replacing the entire, this section. Okay, so you'd be looking at this long section here. Yep. And that would be white, and then the, I'll call them the towers. The towers would remain. Would, would be that. Color. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and again, that uh, the white ACM would be cut in that same standard same pattern. pattern. Yep. Feedback from the commission? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Geisler. Uh, as far as uh, the ACM proposal for the bump out, if you will, the access on that on the southeast elevation there, would that be uh, colored on, on the tower there, but then white on the inset? Colored on the tower, yes. 
Yep. And then the inset above the access door, would that be white or would that still be multicolor? Uh, what are we referring to right in there? Right? That, that would still be multicolor. So, uh, the southeast elevation, Mr. Alec, the one above it. Southeast. Right above the access door on the right hand side of that picture. Uh, that would shattered. still be, uh, well, uh, we would be amiable there. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just curious what you, what you were thinking. If you, if you propose the white and wrapping it around, that would follow through, but it would also have white on your end, end point there. So I'm just curious what your design is. I think would we would prefer to have it uh, still the colored panels there above the door. Okay. Thank you. As far as one of the earlier questions, uh, how many employees would you have operating the facility, the car wash? Yeah, so, so the goal is um, we, we will have a belt installed at this wash uh, instead of a, a track that you have at most other car washes where it, um, you pull onto the track and a roller kind of kicks behind your rear tire. Mm -hmm. This is a belt system, kind of like a moving sidewalk that's new to the industry, uh, well, relatively new. Do you want to kind of speak to the belt, Jim, or? Uh, yeah, Jim, speak. I'm K Enterprises. Um, the uh, uh, belt system, it's better for the car. It's better experience for the customer. Um, less to go wrong there. Allows us to, uh, as far as staffing, um, we can run it with one. We're looking at basically three, um, maybe four people on on at a time greeting the customers that type of thing as they come in um, the uh, uh, it's kind of become the the new industry standard and where we're headed that way uh, hours of operation uh, was the other question that came up a little bit ago we're probably looking at uh, approximately 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. normal express wash operating times um, I think the holiday in the area runs even longer than that, but not a 24-hour business. So the, the, the hours, as far as the businesses in the commercial building, do you have any set tenants yet, or? Uh, we, we do not, okay. no. <coughs> Does this operation have a dryer? The car wash have a drying unit as well? Yes, yeah, so we, uh, we have uh, nine blowers in the design uh, at, the, at the exit of the, of the wash. Okay. <clears throat> and when it's 30 below, it'll still be able to, it'll obviously be shut down then, or? No. Well, no, uh, you, you'd be surprised. I mean, you can operate these below zero. Um, you know, it, the, the equipment, just to give, the equipment package for this building is about $1.2 million. So it's, it's come a long way in, you know, how well we can wash a car and the product we can put out. So. so essentially it's a sidewalk, really, that you drive your car onto. It's, it's, it's great. Them. Customers love them because, you know, again, you're not nervous about you don't have to hitting line your, your rims up. or, yeah. you know, running off of the track and, and that kind of thing. So when your front wheel pulls onto the belt, you put the car in neutral and it just takes your car from there. It's, it's it's a very you know it's a nice setup and is it a pay station outside the the doors uh, yes so um, if we can go back to kind of the site plan as you pull in off of Hanson um, and you turn into the wash there uh, we will have three separate pay stations um, one of which will be a members only lane uh, for our unlimited customers um, which uh, alleviates any potential, you know, stacking issues. Uh, and then the other two will be for uh, retail uh, customers that are not set up with unlimited plans. For cash and credit card. That's correct. For, okay. Yep. And when it comes to the retail um, building, are you envisioning multiple tenants? One, two, three? Is so, you know, we're kind of, we're, um, we're open there. Um, you know, we, uh, potentially we, um, we may sell off the, the lot to another developer, mm -hmm. um, depending on what the council would be amiable to, you know, potentially going after a, a Starbucks for that corner with potentially a smaller footprint than what we're seeing now. Uh, that, you know, and we understand that we'd have to come back to council if we want that direction. Um, 
but you know, initially, uh, you know, we wanted to kind of get the largest footprint uh, that we could on the site, and um, yeah, no idea right now of you know mm -hmm. tenant there, but but thirty nine hundred square feet. Correct. Yep, that's the proposed okay. square footage now. Yep. All right. Thanks. And just as a point of information, you're saying possibly like a Starbucks, the design of the lot really does not allow for a drive-through, which would be something that a Starbucks, I would think, would be highly interested in. Yeah, so I, so I think the only way to accomplish that would be, obviously, you'd have to shrink the building down to maybe, you know, 1,800 square feet, uh, 1,800 to 2,000, which is kind of in their, in their wheelhouse now. Um, and we feel that that would allow, uh, if we redesign that area, you know, for a, um, a drive-through lane. Um, but again, these are, this is just kind of conceptual. Um, we'd have to, you know, gauge their interest, but, you know, we do feel like they'd be interested on this corner, you know, uh, 50,000 cars a day at the corner. It's a, a very attractive site. And Mr. Harlicker, if they were to say develop it for her or sell it off to say a Starbucks, would they have to come back to us with plan changes? Oh, yes, they to would. Put in yeah. drive through? Yep. <clears throat> Any other questions for petitioner from the commission? How long would we envision that proposed thing to be vacant then, any idea? You know, we want to move pretty quickly on it one way or the other. So it's, you know, it's not going to happen in conjunction with the wash. Um, but if we do build it out ourselves, it would probably be 20, uh, 2022 is kind of what we're thinking. When are you envisioning the car wash then? Uh, so we would like to break ground. Uh, <coughs> our goal date right now is May 1st. Break ground. Some concrete's been removed, though, right? I mean, it's... Yeah, so we've already... We, uh, we've put a good, uh, a good amount of money into the lot. Uh, we had the gas tanks pulled. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had extensive uh, testing done, phase one, phase two, several sets of uh, boring testing. Um, the results of the phase two... Uh, there, there was a tank leak on the site back in 2003 um, that was satisfied uh, to the MPCA's uh, satisfaction. Um, but the recent testing that we did uh, was very similar to the results that, that happened back in 2003. Um, our bank wanted us to get the tanks out of there before they'd move forward on the deal. So They're gone then. That's so the, the, the tanks are gone. We have new fill in the hole there. So, okay. Yep. And then operating midsummer, maybe. That's Prob <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. That's right <laughs> near my house. Yeah, <laughs> pro probably end of end of August, yeah. mid September is kind of what we're looking mm -hmm. at now. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Nice enterprise. Looks like a good um, established brand and a good look on that corner. Handy for me. We're, yeah, we're, we're excited about it, and, and you know, we, we love the corner as well. That's why we, you know, we've stayed with the site. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's putting two turn lanes in the underground storage, and uh, to address uh, your concern with the wildlife, we also have a retaining wall uh, that runs along the uh, the back of the property line. There, um, at its highest point, is about four feet. So that could help kind of alleviate some of that as well with wildlife getting onto the property. <clears throat> and Commission, any other questions at this time? Mr. Heikola. Might be a silly question, but I'll go ahead and ask it. Uh, is there any, do car washes do any recycling or reusing hmm. the car wash water? So we do plan to have a reclaim system in place. Um, it, it won't be, uh, why don't you speak, Jim, to the, the reclaim? Um, <coughs> yep, so uh, with, a, with a car wash reclaim system, um, and we're currently 
working through some of that. Um, goals are uh, up to two thirds of it is reused water. Um, we're still, we need to do some testing at the site and that type of thing um, to figure out what numbers we'll be able to accomplish uh, on it. But yes, that's part of our current plan right now uh, to limit our water use. Water is expensive for us. So, yeah. Um, you know, so, yep. You also would pay for drainage fees or that yep. fee as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That wasn't a silly question, no, Don. <laughs> Good question. Well, and it, and it actually kind of ties in with our, you know, with our green, with our branding and the green tones, uh, you know, from the control unit for the car wash uh, also consumes about 50% less electricity than the older control units. Uh, out there, so you know we're, we're really trying to make the investment up front to make it, uh, you know, the best overall experience for the community, uh, etc. So, and as brought up earlier, uh, you would have no objections to a bike rack for the uh, <coughs> tenant building. I I would not see a problem with that. I, I do have one question actually think about this and thinking about the other car wash that's nearby um, one of the issues that came up was a lot of sound from the dryers coming off there now we don't have a residential right across here but there's a lot of stack up obviously at Northdale there um, as people wait for the light to clear so I, I'm wondering you know what what kind of sound mitigation do you have or how loud are they or the, is the newer equipment a little quieter I mean obviously forced air only gets so quiet um, with the with the design of the car wash that we're doing, um, we're currently at about half the blowers of a of a similar express car wash tunnel um, that you'd see from Wash U and that type of thing, um, and and potentially cut back even more. We have a mist wall within the building, and then the plan is also two sets of doors. We would have a uh, you know, a regular uh, what we call Alaska door for security. Uh, where the, the hard plexiglass and then speed doors go up and down, uh, limiting that sound far more mm -hmm. um, for the customers. So, so, so it's, it, it's a thing in every community. I, so I, I currently build car washes all over the state of Minnesota, mm -hmm. and it's a big thing in every community that we go into. Um, you know, if they're if we're going to do any volume and, and whatnot there. So, so to, so to clarify, the, the speed door at the end of the tunnel will be closed while the drying happens for the most part, and then. Or is it just going to be open during operations? No, it's going to, what the speed door allows us to do is instead of having to open the door when the, when the car is 30 feet deep in the wash and you getting the full brunt of everything, we can open it about three or four feet before mm -hmm. the car um, gets out. It also lets us operate at a lot lower temperatures because we lose a lot less heat mm -hmm. um, in the building itself. So, uh, but overall cutting down on um, sound that's emanating from it. So, okay, thank you, Chair Schwartz, Commissioner Nablot. This is really my last question. <laughs> uh, the question is for the applicant. With all the other locations and with your involvement with the building of these new style of car washes in the area, uh, have you experienced any? Uh, electric chargers or the, imp the uh, in uh, installing them as part of uh, your location are, are other locations considering or doing anything like that I'm just curious uh, uh, can you uh, can you repeat the question I guess? Uh, let me, let, me <laughs> let me filter that for EVs uh, or yeah. yeah for car washes are for electric vehicles yeah. are there charging stations uh, a consideration by other likewise car washes that are new uh, not in that your... I have seen no not nothing okay. that we've done anything with yet okay Everybody's leaving that to the gas industry to figure out exactly uh, the uh, so yeah no yeah it, it wasn't I was just curious so thank okay. you for answering yeah. you um, can I ask one more couple more questions so this is a, you ride in your vehicle through the whole tunnel, and then there are vacuum stations. Did I see something? Yes. Yeah, so we so we will. 
Yeah, we have 10 stalls up against the side of the building. Each stall is about 12 and a half feet wide. Um, and the vacuums are free to the customer. Mm -hmm. And that faces the interior of the site. That's correct, yeah. Okay. And one of the reasons that we have the brick running um, a little higher on that side of the building, uh, customers are famous for taking their floor mats and hitting them against the side of the building. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so for the building to kind of withstand its look, um, uh, you know, longevity, it's, it's important to have that stone raised behind the vacuum stalls there. Gotcha. Thank you. And we're also considering potentially putting in a couple uh, mat washers where you can feed your mats into mm -hmm. the into the washers and mm -hmm. uh, so we're you know, kind of contemplating whether we want to go that route or not. Sure. Any other questions, Commission? All right, thank you. Uh, we may have other questions uh, later on, but thank you for now. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, we do need a public hearing on this matter, so at this time I will open a public hearing in planning case 21-4, the site plan for a car wash and retail building at 1829 Northdale Boulevard, MK Enterprises. Anyone wish to speak at public hearing? Chair Schwartz. Sir. There is no attendees wishing to speak on Zoom. Shucks. All right. And having none present here in the uh, room, we will close the public hearing. Commission, thoughts, questions, Mr. concerns? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Geisler. So, I. I have one concern here in from my time serving on transportation stuff and the main concern that I have is the right hand out onto Hanson. Um, when I'm looking at where it is relative to the stoplight, uh, any traffic heading, heading northbound on Hanson is pretty good, but anything doing a U-turn on Hanson is almost blind. Anything turning left out of Gateway is gonna be pretty blind as well. And Northdale isn't that far away from here. Um, as we all know, Hanson is speeding up. Um, the county has been interested in speeding that up as well. Uh, I do think the right hand in is important. So that driveway is needed there, especially because of the median on Northdale, that, that access is, is critical. But I am questioning a right hand out onto Hanson, um, especially when, when we look at the flow of the site. If you come in off of Hanson, you could stop at the retail and you can take the access road, turn on, go down to Northdale, turn right, turn right, and you're right back on the, right back at a signalized intersection onto Hanson. Um, you know, right hand out out of Northdale makes sense because you're, you know, a couple hundred feet and then you're at a stoplight. You're not going anywhere. You can see a long ways up the road there. But that right hand out onto Hanson has me concerned from, tra from a traffic perspective of just, you know, getting folks making sure we're not making an accident spot because of traffic coming in and out, especially with that retail building being right there. Um, you know, we all hope that it would attract traffic. So watching too much coming in and out of that driveway has me concerned. Um, but, uh, and then the other just general comment I had, which doesn't make it useful for the car wash necessarily, and I guess it does depend on the long range plan, but I question the orientation of that dumpster in the center. Uh, if they were both focused into the quote lock two, lot two block one or towards each other, um, the garbage truck would be able to get access in that same space um, versus having to drive in where the vacuums are and potentially damage the vacuums on the site if they back into them. Garbage trucks are not known for their nimble nature. Um, so those, those are just two comments that I had. Otherwise, um, you know, I, I think the design is sound. I think it makes sense. I think it's a great use for the site. I'm excited to have something be there and instead of a derelict gas station. Uh, but those are kind of my two concerns here as far as the traffic flow. And, uh, you know, I'm sure Anoka County will weigh in having two roads there if they change their mind at the last minute. So I think we got to bear that in mind here too. Thank you. Mr. Chair. First, if I could uh, 
make a comment to uh, Commissioner Geisler's comment. Uh, that entrance exit uh, to, to Hanson is an existing driveway that's already there mm -hmm. and was used as right turn, right out to Hanson for the gas station for many, many years. And with my past experience over 20 years uh, with the police department, I really don't recall a single accident at that inter or that location. So I don't believe that the right turn out is necessarily a concern. Okay. And as far as the dumpster, my only concern or thought would be that it's not at all unusual for the trash companies or the consumer or the trash driver to have to pull the cart out of the enclosure so that he has access to it. So again, I don't necessarily know that moving the enclosure would be necessary. And Mr. Harlicker, what, are we creating a problem by having to have access to the enclosure for one lot be from the other lot? Um, Chair Schwartz, that could probably be addressed in the sh shared access the parking agreement. Can be included, that could be included in that. Uh, typically, you know, if these parcels are both, you know, at some point sold off with, so they got different owners, uh, the two owners might want to use different haulers. Um, so in that case, she would really would need um, to that uh, access to the dumpsters be included in that access agreement. Thank you. Yeah, Commissioner Schmoke. Yeah, so I was just going to ask the question too. So um, do we know how many cars can actually stack up going, you know, at the entrance um, waiting to pay? So we, we have approximately 110 feet per lane. So you've got about 330 feet of stacking space. And we can run um, 150 plus cars an hour through the wash. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay, and then my other question, or actually I was going to make a comment as well. I, I have to um, uh, agree that when uh, I heard that there was new business that was going to be um, proposing at the site. Um, I was actually at the um, shopping area across the street and it was one of the first things that came to mind was like, okay, so what's the in and out going to be like? But I saw the same uh, exit that you are <coughs> referring to on uh, Hanson Boulevard and I really didn't realize just how far down it really <laughs> is. Um, I had the initial first, con you know, same concern that's like, wow, that's a, you know, for traffic coming up, you could have somebody have to slam their brakes on quickly, not realizing somebody's turning in. I like that they're trying to design it so it is um, more um, safe, that there's an actual turn lane. I think that will help. And again, that placement further down, I think I'm less concerned about that. Normally I would be. Um, but I think it, there is enough time from the light to where people would be exiting as mm -hmm. well. Um, so that there's reaction time and, and I'm hoping that there wouldn't be any issue and I agree we, you know, with the traffic that's been there in the past there hasn't I don't know of anything either in mm -hmm. the years that I've been here that there's been an issue there so surprising because I think it is you know it seems like it would be um, a prime area for it but I think it's good um, in terms of the dumpsters really quick um, I do agree that maybe turning it would be helpful so that the the trucks only have to come in on that one side. I don't know. I think you should just work with the um, the trash removal company, right? Just to make sure that it is placed where they can maneuver would be my suggestion. I think putting it in the middle island there is fine. Just make sure that it's positioned um, so that it's it's easy access because. Yeah, you don't want to damage <laughs> cars. You don't want to pe put pedestrians in the way. Uh, you certainly want to make it accessible for your tenants to be able to access as well and not cause hardship for them as well. So that would be my advice there. But Yeah, we'll, we'll check with Civil on that and, and see. So if you look kind of further down that, um, that median where it's placed there, mm -hmm. um, 
uh, is, is you kind of go down toward, this is kind of where I had thought that civil might have tried to propose it. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, you know, so the truck might be able to kind of maneuver a little bit better getting in there. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll address that yeah, and see if there's another sure. solution or, yep. um, I, I can tell you that we're going to reinforce the, uh, the concrete instead of having six inches, uh, we're going to go 10 inches deep, uh, and we're going to extend that 15 feet out from the dumpster, uh, mm -hmm. just to make sure there's no caving of, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, the, the concrete, et cetera. So. Yeah. Uh, final comment, just thank you for taking the recommendation of staff too in terms of muting the colors. <laughs> I think yeah. uh, with the amount of space where it was proposed, I think it was a, it was a little bit you know surprising at first. Right. But I think what you're proposing, I think that'll be a, a nice change. Thank you, appreciate you're welcome. that. <clears throat> Commissioner Eichler. I have just one more uh, quick comment or question. I regularly use the uh, car wash right across the street from there at the holiday and I, I know I have waited in that line for 10 minutes and there's probably six or seven or eight cars ahead of me at times and I don't know what what exactly the amount of time is to go through there but what did you say you so get I, if I had to guess and Jim probably has a, a better number I, I, I would guess that that holiday can probably push about 30 cars an hour 40? Maybe at, at max. I, I believe they're prepping over there, which is giving you a couple minutes stop on each car. And like you said, it, you know, so just from that alone, you're, you know, you see eight cars out there and, and that's a 15 minute hold time and they have zero stacking. Um, that, uh, as far as, you know, extra lanes to put people in and that type of thing. Um, our design, uh, and, and this is kind of, uh, uh, you know, this, this is working with car washes all over what's worked best and, and that type of thing. Um, our design on here, the, the 330 feet that he's talking about, a stacking plus the uh, entrance of the tunnel, we can fit about 30 cars in there. Um, uh, that's, you know, at, at non-moving speed. We're, you know, we'll have the ability, it'd be great if we actually hit that number to like, Mick says to, to process 150 uh, per hour. So uh, the, uh, which would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, <laughs> but if, if that you works, know, we'll, we, we'll, we'll throw the party. <laughs> uh, the, uh, uh, but looking in there, I mean, we're talking, uh, at that number, you know, I've got 20 minutes worth of cars that I can stack up there at the end of the day uh, versus, you know, uh, the holiday over there. I'm, I'm familiar. I used to operate a holiday um, over in Blaine and that type of thing. So uh, there you've got basically a couple cars before you hit all the rest of their traffic within their lot. And that's a busy holiday site. Um, we're trying to get away from that because our business is getting them in and out as quickly and as efficiently as possible without bumping them into each other and damaging them, that type of thing. That's kind of why we designed the lot to be able to get around. That's actually one side stacking versus, it, and we've also got the, the route around the back side as well. That comes through, that's the escape why lane the, the, the yeah. well, we've got the, this lane coming through as well that can feed in. Yeah, oh, right. If it yeah. starts to back yeah. up. Yeah, and I think it, the, the other thing that, you know, we're planning on, um, and, and certainly at, at, uh, at launch, we'll have at least two employees just standing out at the kiosks, uh, trying to set up as many customers on the unlimited plan as possible. Uh, and we've, uh, again- And also speed the process. And, and speed the process, exactly, yeah. So if you're an unlimited member and you come through that lane, you pull right up, gate goes up, you're on the track, and you're out of there minute and a half, two minutes tops from the time you hit the lot until you're out the other end. Did you get that, Kathy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, liter literally you can, you know, with, with these, you know, with, with the technology now, you can, you can move 70 to 80 cars an hour and it will look like we're closed. 
-hmm. You won't have any stacking at all. Yeah, one of, so uh, make sure to get the picture of the company that we partnered with in Chicago. We hired them as consultants, um, and they've advised us on a lot of the business uh, and, and helped us actually design uh, part of the site or consulted with us on the site. Uh, when you go out to one of theirs, and, and they're in the car wash world and car wash community, they're, they're internationally known. Um, they've been around a very long time. Before this, they built a, a national brand called NASCAR. Uh, they've been doing it a long time um, and have gotten very effective at it. The, like Mick says, you watch a car pull up onto their lot and it almost doesn't have to stop as it's going through and it's in and out. The, the whole goal is to get them in and off the property as quickly as possible. You know, the, the longer the, that they're there, you know, creates congestion, slows down uh, uh, the process, and, and kind of slows down the experience for anyone. If you're sitting in the line at Holiday across the street and you're eight deep, it's not very fun. And that's actually a quick one compared to the little in-bay automatics that are dotted all around town where it's an eight minute cycle per car. Uh, you know, we, we wanna be able, we'll have the ability uh, to send a, a car down the track you know, literally every 15 seconds. Wow. Um, it's not that it's going through the whole wash in 15 seconds. I can add another car in, um, that quickly, so uh, as safely and easily as well. So. I'm not questioning your judgment. I know you're experts in what you do, <laughs> but just kind of interesting to, to hear how it works. Yeah, and so. then there, there's also a, a software package we'll have. It's called No Pile Ups. Uh, which prevents any type of collision from happening in the tunnel or at the exit. So if you get a customer that comes off of that belt and then they hit the tire shine, which is kind of the last application, and some customers like to put their brakes on there so the dryer stays on the car maybe a little bit longer, um, the tunnel will, or the, tra or the belt will stop automatically when that happens. So the flow is, uh, you know, should always be smooth and out of there. Welcome to Coon Rapids. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we're excited and we appreciate the time for sure. So, thank well, you. you approved it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> wow. Don. Mr. Chair. Mr. Really. Geisler. Uh, one additional question that I had thinking about this um, with your positions for the uh, kiosks or the customer engagement moments, those are going to be roughly westerly facing. Um, and pretty open. <laughs> Not gonna be a whole lot of shade there. Uh, do you have any plans or thoughts for awning or covering from shading because those screens are hard to read? Do you, you know, those types of things, have, have you incorporated any of that into the plan? Uh, yep, we're looking, at, uh, we're looking at a couple options for, uh, normally what we do is we build canopies around our awnings um, mm -hmm. over the site there uh, for ease of use because your window's open. Yeah. Nobody wants to reach out in the snow or, or rain or whatever it might be at that point. So, uh, and yeah, it makes it a little easier to, to see screens and that type of thing. Although the new ones work very well in those situations. So, and then the digital reader board, I don't know if you want to mention it. Uh, yep, it, mm -hmm. and we're also looking at a digital, basically a TV um, that will be the menu um, as you come up. It's basically a 55 inch that will sit um, up above them. Kind so. of sit above the middle lane. So the, the pricing menu is visible from all three lanes. And then as you hit the kiosk, of course, it also has the, the pricing menu on each kiosk. So Mr. Harlicker, with, uh, that's obviously not contemplated on this plan, uh, both as a just structurally or as design wise. Um, would we, would it be useful for us to, I mean, I'm assuming it's gonna match the styling of the building um, that just from a branding perspective, mm -hmm. um, but is there any guidance that the city would wanna give the applicant at this time on how that should be built or any other specs that it should be referenced to? I think I'd leave that up to the uh, commission. Um, is talking about uh, type of colors that they're gonna use on it or well, it, or even just materials. I mean, you know, is it uh, fabric versus metal versus any, any of those kind of things? What's the structure? Is it multi-pole, single-pole? I mean, 
I, the thing is, I, I don't know what it will, what it's going to look like because it's not on here. Right. Um, so th that's really just my question from a, a design perspective of what are we looking at, um, since it's uh, it's a sign slash structure slash. I mean, it's not it's not a big built thing, and I think your design is great. Elsewise, I'm just I'm just questioning what that's going to look like, and how that would work, and height clearance and all that kind of stuff. That's that's what I'm just wondering. And, and if the commission thinks we need to give more guidance or just let that go. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Heikla. Uh, I would just like to mention that it will be a single story. We won't find later that another story has been added to the building. No. Uh, to the car wash? No. <laughs> no to the proposed, the proposed retail. Oh, uh, correct. Just the, just the one story. That's correct. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yeah, any significant changes would come back to the commission, and I would consider that a significant change. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Schmolke. So, uh, Commissioner Geisler, then, do, do you have a recommendation that you'd like to make, or? Are you uh, I'm just, I'm just wondering at the size, scale, scope, and what that is. I've seen everything mm -hmm. from, you know, awnings that are going to cover the whole length of a large truck. In, in depth and then breadth across all three traffic lanes there. Um, you know, it kind of turns into almost a gas station awning that's littler and a little smaller or, or what, what I, I, I don't want to limit the applicant and what they're doing. I'm just curious what it's going to be um, and how we're going to do it and if we want to give them any guidance or just hope. Um. Yeah, usually the, so usually what it is is, um, the, the typical design is a, a pay station canopy, which is generally a two-legged canopy, wind rated at 120 miles an hour. Um, that's just going to go over the vehicle. Um, you know, colors, whatever we want it to be. Um, and, and then, the, uh, well, they have a clearance bar. The overall height on them is, I want to say, about eight and a half feet um, tall. Um, and then, you know, they have a clearance bar that hangs down and tells you how tall your vehicle can be to go through the wash so so it would be a canopy that probably covers two lanes at least maybe three just uh, one canopy yeah we'll, well yeah there's you do a separate one for each one. Oh, okay so kind it's, of more it's like tough structurally to make them cover all of them well yeah to, so. <laughs> and be wind resistant or yep. whatever i see what you mean so yeah but they'll be just um short little excerpts of canopy yep. that yep. sit over the three. Yeah, I'm they, trying to and think and of- It'll be, uh, as far as the canopy is over the, the pay station area, the, those will be all metal, metal aluminum, yeah. um, pretty much, so. I'm trying to think of other car washes I've gone through and I hardly notice them, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> to tell you the truth, the, the, the stop. The, the yeah, you know the pay station. The one that comes to mind is the five dollar or the the old five dollar one off of the boulevard there. That's got a full single canopy covering three lanes. Mm -hmm. Versus Maybe it that's sounds here these are more individual. I, I, honestly, your description has given me enough of an idea what it is that I'm okay with it. Okay. Um, that's what I was looking for yeah. was just some guidance yeah, of what we're doing. That's a great example. Yeah. So okay. um, yeah, just I think kind of I, single versus I, multi. Very but, good. Great. Thank you. Commission, any other comments or questions, concerns? I'm ready to make a motion. Or a motion, <laughs> Commissioner Schmolke. In planning case 21-4, uh, recommend approval of the proposed site plan with the following conditions. Number one, all engineering comments be addressed. Number two, all comments from Anoka County Highway Department be addressed. Number three, the applicant enter into a site security agreement with the city. Number four, which was uh, number 10 previously, is landscaping is required around both dumpster enclosures. Number five, which was formerly number 11, is both ground signs and all wall signage requires uh, separate permits. Number six, which was formerly number 12, is the fiber cement panels on the car wash be more muted tones so that they are compatible and consistent with the commercial building. We still needed that one? Could you please repeat that? So number 12, do we still need number 12? I think number 12 should be revised 
to state what the commission wants as far as the colors. I know what they were proposing. Just my understanding was is that uh, the band along the um, southwest and northeast elevations, the long band would be the white. Sure. And then the uh, mix of greens and grays would continue be consistent with what's on this plan wrapping around the towers. You said it beautifully. So how about if we say um, the fiber cement panels on the car wash be more muted tones as presented to the Planning Commission today? Is that okay? So it's long. I'd still. like to see something a little more. How about uh, <laughs> Help us out. Mr. Harlicker. I think we're fine with the condition as it's stated. And then okay. staff, we know what the, the commission saw today. We can always look back at the, this as well, and we can move forward with that. We know right. what they presented. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I think there was a number seven. Uh, you had something about a share access parking agreement. Shared, yeah, access, between shared between access agreement lots. between both. A shared access agreement between the two lots, correct? Okay. Um, and I think that was it. Okay. So It would be the bike rack. And there is a bike rack, exactly. <laughs> okay, there was a lot there. So we are eliminating formally number four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Those are being removed. And then just adding. for clarification. Second. Thank you. <laughs> All right, motion by Schmoke, second by Navalak. Any further discussion? Chair Schwartz, may I have a moment? Yes, Mr. sir. Bradley unmuted himself. I'm just making sure he didn't have any comments. No, I just wanted to make sure that I was able to vote when I came okay. up for a vote. Thank you. All right, so we have the motion and the second. No further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. This is a decision by the Planning Commission and can be appealed to the City Council within 10 days if anyone so chooses. No, welcome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very well, thank much. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank Do we you. get to be the first to drive through? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have with us. we'll have to leave that to the council, I think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the big guns. The big guns, they go Did first. Did I say big guns? <laughs> Maybe you should say that. Kathy can stay first in line. <laughs> I might, yeah, I might. All right, uh, moving on to other business. We added approval of our rules, policies, and ethics. Commission. This is something we do regularly every year. So it's probably not much different than uh, what we've received in other years. Chair Schwartz, I put. Commissioner Nablock. I propose that we accept the submission for internal procedures and policies for 2021 and the Planning Commission Code of Ethics for 2021. Second. Motion by Nablock, second by Heikola. Any further discussion? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, go ahead, Commissioner uh, Bradley. For for City Council, are there any significant changes uh, between this version and prior versions? Uh, none that I saw. Mr. Harlicker, is there any change over what we've previously had? Uh, no, there's not. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, we have the motion and the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Uh, rules, policies, ethics, uh, procedures have been approved. Next, we have uh, the appointment of a vice chair for the coming year. Chair Schwartz. Commissioner Nablak. Uh, I, s I nominate uh, Mary Schmolke for vice chair for 2021. I second that. Motion by Navlock, second by Casey. Mr. Schmolke, are you willing to take on <laughs> I those will take duties? That on. Yes. You All just right. better be here. <laughs> all, 
all in any, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations, <laughs> Chair. Vice Chair. Yeah, thank you. I, I have a copy of um, Robert's Rules for Dummies. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it from you. <laughs> And Mr. Harlicker, what do we, what do you have under other business? Anything? Uh, it's been pretty quiet. We do have two items on uh, next month's planning commission agenda. One is a um, uh, request for design and use flexibility for the, uh, uh, the Caribou Coffee building that was recently approved and under construction on Egret and Coon Rapids Boulevard. Um, the use is because there'll be two signs on their property now, mm. um, the existing park sign and their business sign. And then the design flexibility, um, their current design and what they're proposing doesn't meet the, all the design criteria for the River Rapids Overlay District. So they're asking uh, flexibility for that. And then up on the uh, north end of town, up on uh, Hanson and 127th, there's a church up there and they've got uh, a large lot and they're only utilizing about half of it. Um, so what they would like to do is put townhouses on the half that they're not using. And in order to do that, they've got to change the zoning from, and land use from low density residential to moderate density residential. So that'll be for the, be before the commission uh, next month. All right. And Commission, anyone have anything for other business? Move to adjourn. Second then. Motion by Casey, second by Nablock. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. <laughs>